Hello everyone and welcome to my guide on how to complete the Corrupted Gauntlet if you suck at OSRS. This video is going to take a focus on some things that other people might have left out of their videos and some little tips and tricks that I do as a less experienced, less skilled player that allow me to complete the Corrupted Gauntlet and basically 9 times out of 10 get the KC. Now, the Corrupted Gauntlet is way harder than the normal gauntlet. You have two and a half minutes less prep time, and the boss is scaled up in both stats and in terms of its specials, so time management is critical for successfully killing the Hunleth. In this video, I'm going to talk about what I gather, how I use my time effectively, priorities for gathering when in a time crunch, and finally, how to stay above zero HP during the boss encounter. And again, just like my video on the normal gauntlet, if you have the stats to complete Song of the Elves and unlock the gauntlet, then you can complete the Corrupted Gauntlet. Once you get over that initial panic mode and you've done a few KC, the Corrupted Gauntlet gets a lot easier. You'll learn the motions, you'll learn the patterns, and you'll get a lot better at it. It's not something that you need to take as such a daunting challenge. It is difficult, but it is definitely manageable at almost any stat level. So for the first couple of minutes in the Corrupted Gauntlet, Explore the rooms immediately surrounding the first room and try to get at least one weapon frame and 80 corrupted shards as quickly as possible. When you get these, you'll be able to make a tier 2 weapon right off the bat, which will greatly save you time going forward. Anything else you can gather in these first few rooms, try and do so, and like you'll see in the clip above, drop those resources next to the singing bowl to have them readily available for prep. Always try to take count of what you've collected so that you don't collect too much, because every second counts in the Corrupted Gauntlet. In total, you'll need to gather 7 Corrupted Ore, 7 Friend Bark, 7 Linum Tyranum, 3 Grim Leaves, at least 12 Paddlefish, and at least 540 Corrupted Shards. And this may seem like a lot, but there is a good chance you will find all these resources as you navigate to the outside room to kill the demi bosses and collect the components for Tier 3 weapons. Of the tier 3 weapons, you're going to want the staff and bow, so look for the dragon and dark beast. If you can't find one or the other, kill whatever you do find, because if you kill two of the same demi bosses, it will drop a different tier 3 component the second time. To go back to the resources you'll need, my reasoning for these amounts is that you'll be making tier 2 armor. Making tier 2 armor adds a couple minutes to your prep time, but if you suck at this game, you're going to want to spend that extra time. Trust me. Tier 2 armor will cause the Hunlip to splash more against you, and also lowers its max hit to 10. The tornadoes with tier 2 armor will also only do 10 to 20 damage, and as you'll see later in the video, the last phase of the fight gets hectic, and you will probably get hit by a tornado at least once. It is definitely possible to do with tier 1 armor. A lot of people do it. But this is a guide for players who suck and having that extra survivability increases your chances of getting the KC. Survivability is also why I say go for three Grim Leaves. The majority of the time you won't need three Prayer Stamina Restores, but the one time you do, you'll be happy you spent the extra time to gather it. And the same goes for getting more than 12 Paddlefish. It is better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Now I want to talk about how to use your time effectively and not waste seconds on tasks or running back and forth from the starting room. The first tip is to drop your tools as soon as you've collected the resources needed with them. One extra inventory space may be the difference between needing to run back to the starting room or not. The next tip is to be ready to craft an extra teleport crystal if you're cutting it close on time. The priority list I give in the next part of the video can help you decide if it's worth it or not, but really it, it comes down to personal preference. I already mentioned dropping resources at the singing bowl, so I'll just reiterate that you need to keep an accurate count of what you've gathered thus far. There's actually a plugin you can download in Ruin Light that does this for you, if you need help with that. The last tip I can give for saving time is to make your potions while moving. This can be a zero time activity, so use that advantage to shave some seconds off your prep clock. The last thing I'll talk about before getting to the boss fight is the priority list that I follow when I'm running out of time and need to fight the boss with less than what I recommended. This will happen from time to time when the RNG for resources in the rooms you've searched just isn't on your side. In order of importance, the first priority should be Paddlefish and Grimleaf potions. 
If your RNG sucks and you're going to be forced into the fight, if you at least have enough food and restores, you may still be able to brute force your way through the fight. Emphasis on maybe. The second priority is going to be having at least one tier 3 weapon, either the bow or staff depending on what you can find. It's always better for DPS to have both, but if you're on a time crunch, it may not be worth it to explore a third or even fourth quadrant to find a second or third demiboss. It will come down to personal preference and RNG as to which tier 3 weapon you bring in, but as long as you have at least one, you can manage the fight, I promise. The last priority is tier 2 armor. If you can't make all the pieces, make what you can. The extra defense may cause the Hunlift to splash more, even if you don't get the damage reduction of the full set. And before we get into the last part of the video where I talk about how to defeat the boss, just a reminder not to get discouraged if you don't get it your first few tries. The Corrupted Gauntlet is hard, and practice makes perfect. If you scuff the boss kill, or if you make a mistake and die, learn from that mistake and apply it to your next run through. It took me probably 10 runs before I was able to kill the Corrupted Hunlift for the first time. And I suck at the game. If you suck at the game, you can do it, because I can do it. I'm mechanically challenged at the game, and I'm playing on what is essentially a Walmart Wi-Fi connection. So seriously, you can do it. I believe in you. Well, at last, we have made it to the juiciest part of this video, the Corrupted Hunlift. This bad boy has a thousand hit points, a max hit of 68 off prayer, and when he stomps you, and spawns more tornadoes during the tornado phase than his little brother in the normal gauntlet. Oh yeah, and those floor tiles, they change colors faster as the fight progresses, meaning you'll have less time to move between switching prayers and moving your player. But don't worry and don't panic. With practice, this boss becomes more and more fun with each run through just because of the ridiculousness of how hard he'll smack you when you swear you switched your prayer in time. Just like the normal gauntlet, every 4 attacks the Hunlift makes will trigger it to change its attack style, and every 6 attacks you make with the correct weapon, in other words the one the Hunlift isn't praying against, will cause him to switch its overhead prayer, meaning you'll need to switch weapons. I highly recommend setting hotkeys to tab between your prayer list and inventory to save you a click and reduce the distance you'll have to move your mouse. Another important note to take is the pathing that the game takes when your player moves. Don't let the game's pathing catch you slipping. Stay on top of where you click to move your player so you don't accidentally step on the colored tiles, run through a tornado, or move under the hunlith. That stomp he does is no joke and it can stack you out very quickly. The only real tip I can give you about the pathing in the game is to spam click the screen where you want to move. If you see your character moving in a direction that will lead you under the Hunlift, through the tornadoes, over the colored tiles, or in a direction that is just ulterior to where you want to be moving at the time, just start spam clicking the screen. Try and move in whatever direction you think will keep you out of the danger zone. And if you watched my video on the normal gauntlet, you might remember that priority list that I gave for surviving the boss fight. In the Corrupted Gauntlet, that kind of goes out the window. You have to pay attention to everything the entire fight, because the Corrupted Hunlift is not as forgiving as the normal Hunlift. The Corrupted Hunlift can stack you out in 1800 different ways, and that's the way the game was designed. It's supposed to be a challenge. This is one of those things where once you've done it a few times and you've taken notice of the patterns and the mechanics of the game, it'll become easier and you'll make less mistakes. But those mistakes that you do make, they're going to hurt. You'll see in this clip I missed a prayer switch and I took luckily only a 29 for the damage. But that could have easily been a 50 or a 60. And that's just the nature of the game. If you suck like me, sometimes you're going to have to tank a hit. I got really lucky right there. You might not. Just remember what I said earlier, don't get discouraged, keep trying. I promise you the money that you'll make from killing this boss will more than make up for the number of times that you die. And since you don't have to use any resources to take on this challenge, it's pure profit every time. It's amazing. That's why it's one of my favorite bosses in the entire game. If you remember earlier I said the last phase of the fight gets really hectic. That phase starts when you get the Corrupted Hunlift to 333 health. 
the patterns on the floor will change and the colors of the tiles will change even faster than they've changed before. Four tornadoes will spawn and you will have to keep moving for basically the entire fight. You'll see on the screen that I tanked a lot of damage right there. That's just something that you're going to have to do. Sometimes you can't help it. There have been times where I have just breezed right through the boss fight. But a lot of times, like this one right here, it's a fight to the end. I'm using all the resources that I brought in. But I'm getting close to 100 KC in this challenge. And honestly, I've gotten much better on it. If, if you keep at it, you can get just as good as I am. Which uh, isn't really saying that much. But, you know, hopefully you'll make some money doing it. And the last piece of advice that I'll give is to just calm down. Don't let your nerves get to you. When you start panicking, you start making mistakes. I know that you all know that feeling. You probably all had it the first time you took on Jad. Your fingers start shaking. Your hands get clammy. That might happen to you when you're taking on the Corrupted Hunluck. But just remember, if you die, you don't lose anything. And you'll learn a lesson. And that'll really honestly help get over those nerves. And again, I've said it so many times, but I'm going to say it again. The more you do it, the better you'll get. By the time you've done it 10 or 15 times, you won't even need to watch a video on how to do it. You'll be a master yourself. But that's going to about wrap this video up. The last tip I can give you is honestly just go for it. I'm planning another video right now. It's going to be a video on how to get into bossing and learn the mechanics that are needed to do harder PVM challenges like the Corrupted Gauntlet. If that's something that's uh, interesting to you or something that you want to see, uh, consider liking the video and subscribing. That'll really let me know that uh, people are interested in the content that I'm putting out. But uh, other than that, uh, have a good one.